It was about 30 years ago. I was maybe 15 or 16 years of age, lying on a beach in the cold night, staring up into the sky that was littered with literally millions of stars sprayed across the sky when all of a sudden this question bubbled up from somewhere deep inside of me and I, I, I almost whispered it in like this hushed excitement. I, I just asked, what if one of those points of light wasn't a star at all? What if it was the light of heaven shining down on earth and inviting us to come? Now ignore for a minute that the person I was whispering the question to was a slightly older, very cute girl sitting on the beach beside me. That's not relevant to the story. What's relevant is that somewhere deep inside of me bubbled up this question about heaven and where it is and its relationship to me and where I was. And I wonder whether you've ever asked that question. It's instinctive to being a human being. The ancient Greeks used to talk about heaven, the philosophers. They would talk of it not as heaven, but as heavens. The word was urinoi. It was always, almost always in the plural. And they thought about heaven as having multiple layers or realities that were connected to each other. Three, in fact. Uh, the first heaven was what we would call the sky, the atmosphere. It was the place of birds and clouds and rain and lightning. Um, the second heaven sat above the first heaven. It was the dark night sky with the sun, the moon, the stars, what we would call outer space. And then far beyond that, beyond what a NASA probe could ever travel and photograph, beyond even imagination was the third heaven. It was the place of the gods, the place where the, the divine dwelled. It was the place where the gods oversaw what was happening on earth, where they scripted the destinies and the fates of human beings and where those fates became reality. In ancient Greek culture, the goal was to go to heaven, but not when you died, while you were still alive. You would go to a, a holy city, a place where the, the layer between heaven and earth was thought to be thin. And, and often that holy city was on top of a holy mountain. You would climb to the top because you wanted to get as close to the gods as possible. And on the top of that holy mountain was a holy temple. It's where heaven and earth interlocked and overlapped. It was where you stepped over the threshold and you, you literally, in their mind, you were leaving earth and you were entering heaven. You were going to pray for love and fertility, for success and safety, for health and wealth, and you would sacrifice to the gods, hoping to appease their wrath, hoping to please them so that they would bend their will, you know, in your favor. And then you would pilgrimage back home, hoping uh, that you had done enough to please the gods so they would answer your prayers. I wonder if that was you standing there I wonder what you would have prayed for. Whether you would have prayed for some of the stuff that goes on in your inner world for fear and sadness that God would take it away or whether you would pray that God would deal with the guilt and the shame that you carry. I wonder whether you would pray for a life filled with gratitude and joy and hope and peace. I wonder whether you'd pray for health for yourself or for someone you love, mental, emotional, physical health. I wonder whether you would pray for your relationships, your family, your friendships, whether you would pray for your marriage, for your kids, uh, for the people that you rub shoulders with every day. I wonder whether you would pray for our world, for war and poverty, for injustice and oppression, for ugliness and pain. I wonder whether you would pray for the health of our planet itself. When the Bible talks about heaven, 
in some ways it talks about heaven so similarly to the way the ancient Greek philosophers used to talk about it. Heaven is the place where God is. Heaven is where the divine presence is to be found. Heaven is where God watches over the way we as human beings are collaborating together on this enterprise of bringing sensibility to our planet. In heaven, God hopes that one day we would live in harmony with him and harmony with ourselves and with each other and bring harmony to the world. And yet there's a vital difference about the way the Bible speaks about heaven. In the Bible, heaven is not somewhere that we have to figure out how to go to. We don't have to pilgrimage to a holy city, ascend a holy mountain, enter into a holy temple and pray and sacrifice and hope that we had done enough. See, the thing about the Bible story is that in the story of the Bible, Jesus is heaven that has come to us. In the story of the Bible, God pilgrimages from heaven to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. In the Bible story, God leaves the presence of goodness and justice and wholeness and harmony and peace and beauty and comes into the world that we have filled with cruelty and injustice and pain and hurt and sin. In the Bible's story, we don't have to pray that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven in the sense that Jesus came to live the will of God in everything that he did bringing love into confrontation with sin and pain and brokenness, bringing healing and restoration and hope and peace. In the story of the Bible, we don't have to go and sacrifice and hope to bend the will of God in our direction. Jesus is the sacrifice who in giving himself isn't sacrificing to a God to appease God's wrath, but is the sacrifice offered by God as a demonstration of his love. In the Bible's story, the resurrection of Jesus is the definitive statement of God that Jesus has done enough that love has conquered sin, that life has conquered death. And so we believe this. Our firm decision is to live from this focused center. Jesus died for everyone. That puts everyone in the same boat. He included everyone in his death so that everyone could also be included in his life, a resurrection life a far better life than people had ever lived on their own. What that means is that God's will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. And that as we in faith follow Jesus, we get to be a part of that will being done. We get to experience what it's like to receive the love of God and to learn to love God back with more of our heart and soul and mind and strength. We get to experience what it's like to be increasingly set free from the fear and the sadness that grips our souls or from the guilt and the shame over who we've been and what we've done in the forgiving, transforming life of Jesus. We get to experience what it's like to increasingly love each other as the ugliness of pride is overwhelmed by the beauty of humility and a loving embrace. We get to experience what it's like for us together to love the whole human community. As the ugliness of greed and exclusion get overwhelmed by the beauty of generosity and justice, we get to experience what it's like to love the planet itself. As the ugliness of exploitation gets swallowed up in the beauty of sustainability. This is what Jesus did. Jesus is the place where heaven and earth interlock and overlap. Jesus is the place where heaven and earth finally collide. And we get to live in that place. And so the question is, in what way do you need to experience heaven on earth right now?
in your relationship with God or in your relationship with yourself or in your relationships with others, in your place in the world, in your spot on this planet, where do you need to experience heaven and earth colliding in your life in the person of Jesus? And are you willing in faith to take that step to allow it to happen for you?